Welcome to Das Won't Hunt. I'm Jiao Pierre Ruth with Information Week. In this episode, we'll be talking about AI and quantum computing. Are they boons or risks to the fintech space? And on this episode, I'm joined by a great set of guests. Uh, we have Doug Hathaway, a VP of Engineering with VersaPay, Prashant Kelker, Chief Strategy Officer with ISG, and Citram IR, Senior Director of Cloud Native Solutions with Venafi. Gentlemen, thank you so much for making yourselves available. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. So I would like to just, you know, just kind of like go around to each of you. Um, and I've got a quick question. You can tell them a little bit of background. It's a quick thought to kind of like get the conversation rolling. You maybe answer it when you're doing your little quick intro of your background. Um, I want each of you to think of either one benefit that you're seeing now or potentially in the future and also one risk um, seeing now or potentially in the future that can be either for AI and or quantum computing as they can relate to the fintech space. So, Doug, if you could just give our our audience a little bit of an intro about you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. So again, Doug Hathaway, VP of Engineering at VersaPay. Uh, I've been in the fintech space, space for 13 years. Um, I co-founded a company uh, 13 years ago that eventually was acquired by VersaPay and um, have been in the trenches, uh, you know, with developing AI uh, for, for the past decade. And uh, I would say one one benefit that I see in the, uh, the AI space is that we see lots of opportunity for increased automation. So AI in the in the, in this space is is has been around for a while. But there's like a new breed of AI that's coming around, and those edges that previously were not automatable can now can now be automatable. Things that maybe weren't possible two or three years ago um, now are are possible. And uh, one of the risks is uh, maybe overuse of AI. You know, trying to throw AI at problems that um, maybe there's a simpler solution. Um, so a risk is maybe trying to apply AI where maybe it doesn't make sense. Sorry about that. Prashant, can you give us, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself to the audience? Sure. Uh, I'm Prashant Kelka. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer of ISG. We are the 800-pound gorilla when it comes to technology sourcing, influencing 200 billion tech sourcing spends every year, and also helping the procurement of close to 22 billion every year. Puts us across industry segments, financial services being the largest one of them. On the the boons versus risks, I see uh, firms exactly like Doug's firm and Sitaram's firm get a, applying AI. Applying AI is to topics like optimized asset pricing. This is these are the things we'd like to see. There's also a little bit of fear when we talk to our clients. There's a fear whether uh, firms, uh, fintech firms, have enough access to technology and can counter any threat from companies who have. Um, of hacking access to better technology. Great, thank you for that. Sitram, introduce Excellent. yourself really quickly. Yep, thank you. Uh, Sitram Ayer, uh, Senior Director, Cloud Native Solutions at Venify. I'm primarily focused on helping drive Cloud Native security strategy, uh, work a lot with financial organizations. Um, our focus area is cybersecurity, and, and obviously we hear a lot of conversations about both AI, generative AI, and you know how they fit into the world of financial organizations, specifically fintech. Uh, in terms of boom, um, I agree with Doug and um, and Prashant. You know, but building a little bit on that, you know, the the amazing customer experiences, you know, mostly that fit into uh, driving more value for end customers is is one of the boons that you know the AI brings in, especially in the context of you know how customers interact with various different financial systems. Uh, risks obviously has to do with data. Um, there is the data risk um, and also especially as we tie in quantum into this mix, um, the uh, the risks associated with being ready for PQC and you know what does it mean you know how do you sort of you know prepare yourself for that uh, what kind of data risk encryption algorithms to use those are all the risks that um, that financial organizations have to deal with uh, but being ready for 
uh, post quantum is one of the biggest biggest challenges and, uh, and the risk associated with it. Great, great. And again, thank you all for uh, making yourselves available this afternoon. Uh, so, deal with the 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 big scary thing that uh, that's kind of like in the lurking in the shadows. The idea of you know, right in the here and now, we have AI that is already at play in the space. Quantum is something that is you know in development, you know, teases of it. Something that is definitely seen as you know being further down the road in terms of it, you know, being a a really robust, engaged part of you know technology. Seeing um, the the fear that has been spoken about in certain ways is the idea of maybe a, a AI, you know, quantum powered AI that can then, you know, crack encryption like it's like it's not even there. Um, you know, that potential inevitability that the organizations are thinking about in the, the context of the fintech space, you know, then it's, you know, it's literally potentially, at least the, the scary part is that it will be the keys to all the kingdoms. Uh, you know, is that something that is being talked about, really concerned about, or is that more of you know, a scary story uh, that, that, that maybe folks are you know, saying, okay, that, that's a possibility, but the reality, you know, here are the steps of how things might play out going forward you know, as it applies to FinTech. Definitely able well, to I, I think it's in, the, yeah, sure. I, I mean, I'll, I'll say that at, a, at a macro level, I think it's subconsciously, a lot of people are thinking about it. I mean, you go even into like Hollywood and movies like Leave the World Behind in Netflix, uh, on Netflix, where there's like some unknown uh, takeover, right? And it involves technology and maybe a little bit of AI and a lot of, uh, you know, everything is ubiquitous now. And so if something were to take over, I think that subconsciously people see this AI and, and they get scared because um, they see it as, as like a person and people can be scary uh, when, when they're, they don't have the right motives. So um, I, I think there's also a lot of unknowns too about you know, what, what the future could lead to with a lot of these new technologies. And if there's anything that I've learned about people is that you know, when you have it rapidly advancing technology and a lot of unknowns, then there's fears uh, uh, come. So I think to combat those, those fears, I would say that like we need to focus on education, uh, guardrails, policies around these things uh, so that, it, that they become less of unknowns and more of uh, understood concepts uh, with less fear. Yeah, so, yeah. so the, the, the point that you made, um, uh, Jean Pierre, about you know, the keys to the kingdom, you know, it's, 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 it's something that people are thinking about, right? So at, at the highest level, when we talk about sensitive customer data that needs to be protected, uh, especially in financial organizations. So one very important aspect of protecting the data is encryption. So we talk about encryption all the time um, and encryption is math based, right? So even the fastest classic compute cannot decrypt, which is why we say, oh, what do we need to do to ensure our data is protected? Oh, just encrypt it and leave it there. And so far, we've been fortunate, obviously, with the ability of classic compute not being able to decrypt and ensuring that you know the data is not accessible. Uh, but the compute, uh, the quantum compute, um, completely uses a different technology with qubits and that sort of a thing, and potentially can solve these problems uh, and defeat the encryption algorithms very simply. Said so, you know it can be done super simple. Don't know. Will it take a long time? Don't know. But at least. The idea is that with quantum being in play, with definitely AI being in the mix, uh, there is potential for some of these quantum computes to be able to easily, um, you know, solve this math problem, so to speak, uh, which essentially solves the encryption problems. Um, the the encryption algorithms itself um, that we use today, whether it's RSA or ECDSA or any of those, they're all based on certain key algorithms. Um, there are standards that are being put in place um, to ensure that you know there is more um, post quantum encryption algorithms that that potentially can help with ensuring that you know the data is protected so that that keys to kingdom uh, is never never um, gotten so, so there are there are NIST algorithms we can expand on that so NIST has been coming up with several proposals about you know how that is done um, but AI definitely is playing a huge role there as well, because we always talk about 
what is what is data? You know, if we, if I can't encrypt it, if I can't steal data today, I'm going to harvest it. I'm going to just keep it because someday I may have the ability to use a better compute to decrypt it. So let's just use the best mechanisms of what AI provides today, best mechanisms of what I can use, do through breaches, just harvest the data. I won't do anything with it, but I'll just continue to harvest it because someday I will be ready or I'll, I'll have enough computing power to use um, um, the, the quantum computers to, to break into those uh, data, data bits. I think those are the challenges, but keys to the kingdom uh, is a conversation that 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 we need to have with you know, every financial organization to say how do you protect it, how do you make sure that you know it's not in the wrong hands, and what are the what are the various steps that needs to be done to um, ensure that you know uh, you are ready for that combination of AI and post quantum. Yeah. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Prashant, your thoughts? Yeah, I think Sitaram is making excellent points on the, the tech part of it. So let me take uh, another angle. And that's what we're hearing when we look, talk to the financial services side and the cap markets part of banks. And I think one, one can start looking at how data is being used there uh, under what we call grand old fashioned AI, GoFi. So not the JI, uh, Gen AI pieces. If you look at grand old fashioned AI, it's been around in cap markets since 2015. And you start looking at how they're looking at patterns there. You you start realizing that uh, data without context is quite useless. So da data can be turned into information only if it has context. Like what, what good is a credit score if it's dynamic? What good is a credit score if it's not connected to other things? Right, so data itself, itself without context is not so much use. So the, to the point of the keys to the kingdom, the key is the is keeping data separate from context, and that's how cap markets are dealing with most of these situations. So if if you lo start looking at those patterns, um, I think Sitaram definitely has a point. Quantum has a significant threat to current cryptographic standards. Yeah, so I think there's risk to current financial transactions. There's risk to current data integrity. But as long as you're keeping data away from context, I think you should be OK. So we, I think we need to start looking as much at data engineering and information architecture as we do uh, technology and security. Okay, great, thanks for that. Um, follow up question, Prashant, we'll start with you. I'm responding on this. Uh, during this week, I was attending a New York uh, uh, FinTech conference uh, and one of the thoughts, one of the questions was about uh, about where the edge is right now and here and now in terms of making use of AI in a kind of a fintech space. Is it more of the smaller fintechs or the incumbents because they have more of the data that they can make use of and work with and trying to get a benefit out of that? Uh, are we are you seeing more? Is there more activity, more action that's being done by you know maybe lower, larger? you know, come kind of institutions trying to make use of mountains of data that they might have and might want to try to recruit AI to do something with it, or at least in this moment, the, you know, maybe the smaller, more nimble organizations are trying to do maybe not as maybe, I don't want to say risky things, but trying to do, uh, trying to explore a bit more to try and find some real benefits that uh, that AI could apply into uh, you know the, a financial tech kind of space right now. It's a, good, it's a great question, Joe. So if you look if you look at what we've been uh, talking about and working with over banking and financial services over the last I would say three quarters, so not before the last three quarters, we are noticing two things. The first is there's a little bit of um, they're tired of spending on data. They spent on master data governance. They spent on data lake houses. They spent on data warehouses. They're probably now spending on AI, Gen AI. So there's a little bit of uh, frustration there in the spending part of it. However, at the same time, we are noticing they're trying to do things on their own. So I'm, I have mixed feelings about that. They're trying they're trying to do some things on their own just to learn. But I don't know whether they're taking good buy versus build decisions as they do that. So I would say there are a lot in experimentation phase trying to test this on their own. So I see a lot of internal engineers doing things 